Good morning, grace and peace be multiplied to you all in Jesus' name. Amen. Clean dove. This word, all of you, grace and peace be multiplied to you all in Jesus' name. What book are we starting with today? What book should we start with today? What book should we start with today? Oh, people, good morning, Major. What's going on? What book? I think we should start the book of Hebrews today. I'm thinking starting the book of Hebrews today. Um, good morning, Big Papi. Hey, morning, all. Okay, let's make our declaration quickly. Let's go to our declarations quickly this morning. First John, hmm, that's a good one. Didn't we just finish First John? I think we just finished First John not too long. Or should we just flow into Hebrews? I think we did First John not too long. We, can, we will get to First John. Let's do Hebrews, Hebrews, James, First. Let, let's just flow to Third John. Yeah, let's flow to Todd John. Let's start to the book of Hebrews today. There's no sound from your end. I release sound in Jesus' name. Let's do the book of Hebrews. Let's do Hebrews, do James, and go to First Peter. Let's do Hebrews, James, and go to First Peter. Let's do Hebrews. We do the book of Hebrews. Hebrews have it. Glory to God. Hebrews chapter 1. We're in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 to 14. Short read, very powerful read. Hebrews 1, 1 to 14. Hebrews 1, 1 to 14. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 to 14. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 to 14. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 to 14. Hebrews 1, 1 to 14. Hebrews 1. P flow, it has happened just as you said. It is perfected in Jesus' name. Amen. Our declarations quickly. One, two, three, go. And the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm the redeemed of the Lord. I'm the beloved of Abba. All my sins are forgiven. I am passionately loved by God. I am powerfully helped by God. I am kept and protected by God. I enjoy angelic assistance. I am irrevocably blessed. I am eternally forgiven. I am the healed of the Lord. I enjoy divine health. I have the favor and the wisdom of God. I am fruitful. I flourish, excel, and prosper in all that I do. Nothing is against me. The, I have the multipliers anointing. Nothing is against me. Nothing dies in my hands. I am never stranded. The supernatural is natural to me. All things are working together for my good. God loves me more than the devil hates me. And grace is working for me. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Hebrews chapter number one. Hebrews chapter number one. The book of Hebrews chapter number one book of hebrews chapter number one god bless the reading of his word in jesus name amen amen and amen hebrews chapter number one hebrews chapter number one father open up our eyes to see jesus bless us through your word let christ be revealed as we are unveiled in jesus matchless name amen god who at various times, sundry times, in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophet. So Hebrews 1 says, God in time past couldn't speak. That's what it actually means to our fathers, but found ways to communicate to send message in types, in shadows. 
and of course through prophets. So, who at various times, in various ways, spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets. Has in these last days spoken to us by his son. He's spoken to us by his son. It means what he did with his son is the loudest voice you hear from God. Spoken to us by his son. Spoken to us by his son. You know, through his son would have been different. In this, this is speaking by his son. So by the finished work of on Calvary, God made his loudest voice, the loudest shout was from the finished work on, on the cross of Calvary by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the world. This is son, who being the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. This son is the brightness of his glory. Other translation shows you he's the sole expression of the father. Another translation shows you he's the mirror image of the father. He is the exactitude of his person. He is the revealer of his nature. In our Nigerian palace, now Jesus dragged God's leg come out. So Jesus is the full expression, the sole expression, not one of the expressions of God. Jesus is not one of the expressions of God. Jesus is the sole expression of God. Yeah, when he had by himself purged is the exact representation of his being. That's important to know, the exact representation. So if you want to know how God is exactly, look at Jesus. If you want to know how God is exactly, look at Jesus. Look at Jesus. Look at Jesus. If you want to know how God is exactly, look at Jesus. See, he is the nature of the Father. See, he is the full picture. He's the entirety and the totality of God. Who being the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Verse 4. So, if you really want to know God, look at Jesus. If you really want to know God, look at Jesus. If you really want to know God, look at Jesus. Look at Jesus. Look, that's who God is. So God is no longer hiding, hiding himself. He's revealed himself in who? Jesus. If you really want to know God, what? Look at Jesus. Haven't become so much better than the angels as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. So, Hebrews is a book of comparison. Hebrews is a book of comparison. What verse you want me to read in Message and Tippity Ayo? Hebrews, Hebrews is a book of comparison. So, Hebrews chapter 1 is Jesus is better than the angels. Note down. Hebrews is a book of comparison. Hebrews chapter 1 is Jesus is better than them angels. Hebrews chapter 1 is Jesus is better than them angels. 
I'm going to read 1 to 4 in message and TPT because it's important, right? I'll do message first and I'll go to TPT. Message 1 to 4. Going through a long line of prophets, God has been addressing our ancestors in different ways for centuries. Recently, he spoke to us directly through his son. He spoke to us what? Directly through his son. He spoke to us directly through him, his son. So when God is speaking directly through us, to us is through his son. So because the son of God is God. So when he says, I'm speaking to you directly, it means I'm talking to you one on one. If I say to you, your soul, I didn't send anybody to you. I spoke to you directly. It means I came. Message is saying God has spoken to us directly because God is the son. No middleman, no mediator. I'm speaking to you directly. It means I'm not speaking to you through any channel or any medium. That means it's me that you saw. In the same way, he said, I'm speaking to you directly. Through his son. By his son, God created the world in the beginning. And it will all belong to the son at the end. The son perfectly mirrors God. And is stamped with God's nature. He holds everything. The son holds everything together. By what he says, powerful words. The son holds everything by what he says, powerful words. After he finished the sacrifice for sins, the son took his honored place high in the heavens, right alongside God, far higher than any angel in rank and rule. God did, God ever said to an angel, You are my son. Today I celebrate you, or I'm his father, he's my son. When he represents his honored son to the world, he says all angels must worship the son. Let's read 1 to 4 in TPT. 1 to 4 in TPT. Throughout our history, God has spoken to our ancestors by his prophet in many different ways. The revelation he gave them was only a fragment at a time, building one truth upon another. It was a fragment at a time. It was the puzzle, but it was scattered. It was not together. It was not together. But to us living in these last days, God now speaks to us openly in the language of of a son so sonship is the language of god sonship is the language of god sonship is the language of god when god wants to speak to us god now speaks to us openly not to them he spoke to them he speaks to us openly in the language of a son the appointed heir of everything for through him, God created the panorama of all things and all times. The sun is the dazzling radiance of God's splendor, the exact expression of God's true nature. His mirror image, he holds the universe together and expands it by the mighty power of his spoken word. He accomplished for us by the complete cleansing of sins and when he took his seat on the highest throne at the right hand of the majestic one he accomplished for us the complete cleansing of sins he accomplished for us the complete cleansing of sins he accomplished for us the complete cleansing of sins he accomplished for us the complete cleansing of sins. One more time. He accomplished for us the complete cleansing of sins. Well, he now says he is 
infinitely greater than angels, for inherited a rank and a name far greater than theirs. For God has said, God has never said to any angel what he said to Jesus. So go back. He accomplishes the cleansing of sins. Once for all time, once for all men, once for all sins. I'll continue in New King James verse 5. Verse 5. I remember I said to you that Hebrews chapter 1 is the book of comparison. And what is in comparing in Hebrews chapter 1? Jesus is better than the angels. Hebrews chapter 1 is Jesus is better than the angels. One more time. Jesus is better than the angels. That's what Hebrews chapter 1 is about. For to which of the angels did he ever say, You are my son, today have I begotten you? And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. But when he again brings the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels, he says, Who makes his angels, mean his angels, spirit? And his ministers a flame of fire. Who makes his angels spirits. And his ministers a flame of fire. Who makes his angels spirit. And his ministers a flame of fire. But to the son he says. Your throne O God is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. I need to read that again. You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. Let me say something there. There's some of us who really love righteousness, but we don't really hate lawlessness yet. The truth is you can love both. You can claim to love righteousness and you condone lawlessness. You can claim to love righteousness and you condone lawlessness. You can love righteousness and condone lawlessness. That verse 9 says you have loved righteousness and hated he uses a strong term there. Hated lawlessness. And you have hated lawlessness. You have hated lawlessness. You can claim to love righteousness and condole lawlessness. You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Both can work together. No, no. No, no, no. Auntie, uncle, both can work together. No, no. One will have to give space for the other. For you have cherished righteousness and de this detested lawlessness. That is the Passion Translation. Detest. He uses a strong language there. You can't. You can't have both of them. You cannot have both of them. I love righteousness, but ah, man, just the way the things of this world, man. You love justice and hate evil and NLT. You can have both of them. Two of them, can, you can have both of them. So every time you still think that you, there's a flair for lawlessness, there's a flair for debauchery, just that kind of way of life, it means you do not understand how you are loved by Abba. You don't understand that the, you, how you are loved by Abba. Yeah? If you understand how where righteousness comes from, the love of God. You won't love lawlessness. And once you come into that consciousness, therefore God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. You will be glad. You'll be a better person. You haven't accepted his love. That's why you think there's something else out there to love. It is because you have not accepted his love. That's why you think that there is some, something out there to love. Are you listening to me? Is your lack of acceptance of his love that makes you feel that there is something out there to love. 
You, Lord, in the beginning laid the foundations of the earth, and the heaven are the works of your hand. 11. They will perish, but you will remain, and they will all grow old like a garment. Like a cloak, you will fold them up, and they will be changed. But you are the same, and your, year, your years will not fail. But to which angels, to which of the angels has he ever said, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool? <clears throat> so do you see chapter 1 is Jesus is far better than the angels Hebrews chapter 1 he retires the angels Jesus is far better than the angels Jesus is far better than the angels Jesus is far better than the angels Hebrews chapter 1 he settles that Jesus is what better than the angels Jesus is what better than the angels Jesus is what better than the angels. So you can't do angel worship when you carry Jesus inside of you. Angels respond to you. Having said that, he now goes to verse 14. Now watch this. But to which of the angels has he ever said, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool? Can you see that? And but to the believer, he says, he has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. If Jesus is better than the angels, the believer is far more better than the angels. But to which of the angels has he ever said, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool? He didn't say that to any angels, but he said that concerning you, are you? He said that concerning Adesua. He said that concerning Yosola. He said that concerning Flourish. He said that concerning Michael. He said that concerning you. Where did he say that? Ephesians 2 verse 6. He has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So you are seated in Christ. You are seated in Christ. So, oh my God, this is really powerful. This is really powerful. This is really powerful. It means... The angelic hosts respond to you. They respond to you too. They respond to you. They respond to you. Are they not all ministering spirit sent forth to minister to those who will inherit salvation? Are they not all servants sent to minister to you? Because this is powerful. This is really powerful. To which of his angels did he give seat? He only gave seat to believers in Christ Jesus. And the angels mean it. Glory to us. Glory to God in the highest. Oh my, I feel it. I just remember the message at Convergence. Thinking of preaching it in London and preaching it in Abuja. I just, it's just the, the host is here. That I don't know. I don't know where the Lord will lead me to in London this week. But it's going to be powerful. I did not own ministry in spirit. Send forth to minister those who will inherit salvation the seeds are for sons not angels the very you are flowing seeds are for sons not angels the host is here you are the host the host is here so you are not just one of those angels no no when a believer dies, sometimes you hear an, an angel has gone to hell. Which angel are you talking about? A son has returned to the father's house, to his seat. Glory to God. So Hebrews chapter 1, hold up a minute. This is so powerful what I'm about to say. Jesus is better than the angels. You are in Christ. Jesus walked on water. Jesus healed the sick. Jesus raised the dead. He was never stranded. Jesus is better than the angels. I am better than the angels. I hope with these few words of mine. Have been able to convince you or not confuse you that you are better than the angels. So same way, Jesus is better than the angels. Jesus has a seat. I do have a seat. Jesus is not roaming. I am not roaming. You see what I'm saying? Jesus is better than the angels. I am better than the angels. Because 
concerning Hebrews, better things, better things, better things, better things, better things. Glory to God. I can't wait to see you all in church today. I can't wait to see you all in church today. Amen. Let's go to Hebrew. Let's go to pray as you go. Pray as you go. Pray as you go. I say pray. Declaration 18. Declaration 18. Declaration 18. 18. Declaration 18. Declaration 18. Declaration 18. Declaration 18. 18. Declaration of prayer as you go. The 18th declaration of prayer as you go. The 18th declaration of prayer as you go. The 18th declaration. Tomorrow or today is... Oh, today is, today is Wednesday now. Can, that, can today be Tuesday? Jenny Rivers, what's going on with you? Today is not Tuesday. Today is Wednesday. Oh. Ah, ah. You see, that, that Jenny, I don't understand. People should pray for Gina. I'm telling you. Since she started coming to church, she doesn't know, doesn't know um, things like that. This is not coming to church because of business money. How can you go today, Tuesday? Which calendar are you using? What's the story? Hold on a minute. What is the lesson in the story of the shrewd manager? Shrewd manager. The one with the talents. Then he cares what you're talking about. She will stand up today again. I'm telling you. Japanese calendar. I'm coming today with Tuesday. Okay. Then he can ask it. Ask ask today in church. Ask today in church. Ask today. Send it to me now. Send it to me on DM. Then ask today in church. I'll deal with it. Okay. God's grace. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9. The life of a believer is sustained by the grace of God. Everything we do and everything we are, we are solely is by God's grace. Send it to church this evening. I'm answering questions this evening. People have a question about humility. Okay. Let's deal with it in church. This and just send it, send it. Today I testify that God is one of the good works of God. Indeed, you are a great God. I declare that you're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm praying for you now. I declare that God's grace is sufficient for you in every area of your life, your challenges, and maybe even the present struggles that you have to deal with. I declare that you have grace. And for all you need for today, you are full of power, strength, and determination. I decree nothing you face will be too much for you. That nothing you face will be too much for you. You overcome every obstacle, outlast every challenge, and come through every difficult difficulty better off than you were before i pray that one again for you that you overcome every obstacle outlast every challenge and come through every difficulty better off than you were before i declare that you are lifted by god's grace and you are enabled to gain the ad gain advantages today i decree and declare that gain preference through that you gain preference through God's grace. I declare and declare that you gain preference through God's grace. I declare that you gain approval through God's grace. In the name of Jesus, you have preference and you have approval in the name of Jesus. That's a word for somebody. You are preferred and you are approved. I speak it over your life. You are preferred and you are approved in the name of Jesus. You are preferred and you are approved in the name of Jesus. You are preferred 
and you are approved in the name of Jesus. I decree that you gain support in every area of your life through God's grace. You are supernaturally assisted and supported. You are supernaturally assisted and supported. I declare that God's grace brings you um, uh, to brings brings to you speedily what labor and effort cannot give. I decree that God's grace brings to you speedily what labor and effort cannot give. I decree that God's grace brings to you speedily what labors and effort cannot bring. I decree that God's grace brings to you speedily what labor and effort cannot give. I declare that God's grace activates favor and breakthrough for you. I declare over your life that God's grace will do exceedingly abundantly above all that you ask or think. I declare that the grace of God will exceed your expectations. The grace of God will exceed your expectations. The grace of God will exceed your expectations in the name of Jesus. I decree because you honor God, his blessings chase you down and overtake you. Get ready for overflow. Blessings chase you down and overtake you in the name of Jesus. You always be in the right place at the right time. People go out of their way to favor you. People go out of their way to favor you in the name of Jesus. Everybody that is trying to talk you down, litigations against you, accusations against you, it backfires against them because you are the anointed of God. I decree a reversal to every closed account, closed transaction, closed situation. There is a reversal in the name of Jesus. Every disapproval, every rejection, there is a reversal. They are calling you back now in the name of Jesus. You live in grace and you walk in the abundance of God's grace. In Jesus' matchless name, amen. I will see you in church this evening. Hey, I have some announcement for you, which is really very good. And the announcement is Lagos Church. Listen to me. I have a surprise for you this Sunday. First, second, and third service. This Sunday. London Church, I'm with you Saturday and Sunday. London, London, London. Saturday. Um... I will be with you Saturday and Sunday. In Jesus' name, you all get your friends, your family members, jam that place. Then let's have midweek corner this evening. I, I can't wait to see you this evening. God is up to something and it has started already. I'll see you this evening. I love you all. Blessings. Blessings. <laughs>